Hey y'all, and welcome to Politibrawl. My name is Brian, and Ted Cruz refuses to be pushed around by this woke Democrat, Bob Goldbar Menendez. He explodes at him for being a shady, corrupt Democrat who keeps on interrupting him. And I have never, ever seen him this mad. Point out, first of all, on the 16 names, uh, the chairman observed that, yes, the Biden administration is holding hostage $130 million for Egypt and demanding that 16 people be released from prison. No, the chairman did not recognize that. To be fair, you, you, I, I was... did not recognize. Don't put words in my mouth that I didn't say. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you deny that they're withholding $130 million? I, I, I did, did not Do you deny that, that they're withholding I, $130 million? I don't, I don't need to be cross-examined by you. Well, you're cross-examining me. I'm speaking. I'm cross you're cross-examining me. Mr. something chairman, that you misstated. You're, you're chair, interrupting me. You're interrupting me. The chair me. will not and, allow... Really? The chair will not allow. But what will you not allow? You to say something I did not say. I did not say. All you I are said interrupting is that there are six in the of a names. Sentence. You're interrupting I, me in the middle it, of a sentence. Do you deny that they're holding the money hostage? The senator will withhold. How about you withhold? The You're the one interrupting withhold. me. I'm speaking. You're interrupting me. I, I will adjourn the meeting. Uh, if, if you, you are want afraid to have of your opportunity, and want to you will have it. You are not allowed lecture to put on comedy. words in my mouth. You are and interrupting me. I know you want me. to do this for your YouTube, for your presidential You, you are candidacy. interrupting me. Okay, but, that's, that's an but aspersion But stop my putting character. words that you're I have not me said. Again. I did not say anyone is holding anybody hostage. You, you are so, interrupting ahead, me again. Are, are you going to allow me to speak, Mr. Chairman? I think the lady doth protest That's very kind of you. And I will say, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate your lecture on comedy. When you interrupt me. All right, so let me speak more precisely, because I was in the middle of one sentence when you interrupted me. It is an established fact, publicly acknowledged, that the Biden administration is holding $130 million hostage in Egypt and demanding the release of 16 prisoners who are currently incarcerated. What the chairman just said is that I should be satisfied, because when I asked for those names, the administration provided them in a classified document that members of this committee can read in a, in a skiff that is hidden from the American people. Mr. Chairman, the fact that it's hidden from the American people is a problem. This is not a star chamber where we sit in smoke-filled rooms. Rather, the American people have a right to know about the radical agenda that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are putting forward. And there's a reason it's classified. They don't want the names known. Why? Because, look, under Barack Obama, the Obama administration repeatedly and vocally supported the Muslim Brotherhood, a terrorist organization that murders Americans, that murders Israelis, that is virulently anti-Semitic. When we saw over a million people standing in the streets of Cairo, they were holding up signs saying America supports the Muslim Brotherhood, because the Obama-Biden administration had a policy of supporting the viciously anti-American terrorists in the Middle East. Why does Joe Biden not want those names released? Because they can't defend the names on the list. And so for the chairman to say, you should be happy that they're hidden in a secret room if you want to defend them, S Senator Kane talked about accountability. Let's have some accountability. Let's talk about the 16 names. And the American people want to know why Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are trying to force our allies to release people who may well be a national security threat to the United States. Ted Cruz is out there roasting the chairman, Bob Menendez, on two major levels. One, his actual international policy, which under the Biden administration has been a complete and total disaster. And furthermore, turns out Bob Menendez was caught smuggling gold bars from Egypt. So he's using the, the nation of Egypt as an example of not only his bad policy, but of his own just terrible corruption. And there's someone that's here on this channel who is very unique when it comes to understanding gold and precious metals. The CEO of Colonial Metals Group, Paul Stone, is here with us today. Mr. Stone, welcome aboard. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. Great to see you again. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming on again. And uh, <laughs> let's just dive right into the obvious. Since you have such a wealth of knowledge, uh, quite literally and quite physically in a way, um, why is Menendez smuggling gold for the Egyptians? <laughs> what would lead you to do this? You know, it's just another example of how, to me, uh, government folks, mostly 
you know, certainly can't say everyone would, should fall into that category, but they just react to stuff. I'm sure someone just pro proposed something to him and he thought it was a great idea and he didn't have a problem betraying his principles or his character or risk embarrassing his family or ruining his name or besmirching and embarrassing America on the world stage. Um, yeah, it, I don't think these guys really dream up schemes too often. I think they come and folks come and propose them and they just go, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. And it, I did, how ridiculous. Egypt, uh, gold bars from Egypt. Um, it's, it's so weird. Uh, it's, it's asinine. And you're right. They, they go into this with this harebrained scheme. And they think that they can get away with it. And there's right. another way too, that, uh, that politicians have been, uh, known to corrupt be corrupt but in a very legal sense and that is have your children sit on international oil boards for companies in well, i don't know ukraine don't want to get too spicy here but that is exactly what happened with hunter biden and of course this is the exact same party so how bad and how deep do you think the corruption problem is at our federal level i think it, it's all the way to the core um you know, the minute they they made it okay for themselves to just lie to us about our financial situation, our financial health, uh, when they decided that they would just burn the candle at both ends instead of uh, honoring principles, honoring the Constitution, um, we we as a country and they as a government certainly started to slide down a slope where there's no end except to where there's a bottom. And that yeah. bottom is in uh, the bankruptcy, in my opinion, of the government itself, that it literally has exhausted all of its ideas and the financial means that support them acting on those ideas. And they're just it's just over, literally just over, because the more they grab for control, right, just like anyone in life, the more someone's grabbing for control. What is that really a sign of an increasing level of fear? Yep. Fearful people are control or, or control freaks, if you will. And to me, the government is just hell bent and and, and, and just uh, uh, drowning in fear. So that means they don't have any real plan. Well, and that's beyond disheartening because for me, I'm barely thirty years old. I'm looking at my future, and I do not like what I what I see. Do you, you you think that we are going to not just lose our money, but we're going to run out of money? As a matter of fact, I was reading something the other day. Uh, the only time I think I've ever agreed with something that Robert Reich has has to say uh, is that we're going to run out of Social Security funds within the next decade. Yeah, we ran out of that a long time ago. They print money. So, yes, young man and anyone like you in your 30s or 20s or younger, I feel so sad in a special way that you, I got a taste of what America was. I was born in 1970. So I got a taste of what it was like to lime my own soccer fields and we played on grass and dirt. You know, I got a taste of what it was like when the town pitched in to do things at the you know, town hall. Uh, people got together and, and made stuff happen. Johnny you know, needed a new pole barn built and the town got together to help with that. Today, they just send money. Today, they just send contractors and, and there's no more this personal uh, cohesion amongst the folks that uh, live here. Uh, the government's moved itself in between all of our lives and between each of us. And I, I tend to completely agree. I don't want to agree, but we seem like we've compartmentalized so much of what a community can do. And we're just shoving little cogs into a giant machine. And it seems like it, it just it feels like we're being hollowed out. And it's not just financial. It's almost spiritual in a way. It's and everywhere. It we're, we're losing core of core pieces of ourselves. And I don't like getting religious. I'm a professing Christian, but I'm a, I'm a terrible professing Christian. And I'm just recognizing that we've hollowed so much out and it feels like we're losing something truly spiritual, too, truly soulful. And it, that's a tougher and longer conversation. But if you don't mind, I'd like to go back to Ted Cruz. Because mm -hmm. uh, I love the, these sort of... Uh, uh, spiffy debates i love it when he's just throwing in these little pot shots him and senator kennedy are my two favorites for that regard yeah because i'm a political junkie i love uh -huh. this sort of stuff i've cut yeah. my teeth in the three different legislatures i am now a hop skipping jump from capitol hill i love where i'm at in that regard but when it comes to Cruz, uh do you, originally they used to say that uh he could uh i think lindsey graham made this quote lindsey graham said that if he 
were to shoot someone in the Senate, or if he were to get shot in the Senate, uh, you couldn't get the votes to convict. Because <laughs> he, he was so unlikable at the beginning, and now he's turned himself into a much stronger character. So what, what do you mm -hmm. think about the, the arc that Ted Cruz has sort of had? Yeah. Um, there are some folks that are pretty sharp minded and they understand. And, and I, I certainly have run across many of those who hail from Texas, um, the great state of Texas. And uh, yeah, he's just drilling this guy to a wall. And again, I don't know if it's, you know, if one party attracts weak weakness, weak minded and escape, you know, scapegoating and excuse making. And one tries to attempt to to have things normalized and and based in reality but man senator mendez represents his party well when he represents the ineptitude of even having uh an unfriendly discourse in front of a camera i'm completely and totally inclined to agree and it's just a sad state of affairs for our political system at as a whole and uh by the way senator menendez is currently going through his trial right now so uh yeah. well it's gonna be fun to see what happens but I am not too hopeful for actual justice, considering what the court system has been doing in this country. So folks, that's all we got for you here today. My name is Brian, and this is the uh, ever intelligent and successful Mr. Paul Stone of Colonial Metals Group. Check out his website. I believe the link will be in the description. Uh, if not, it's a uh, Colonial Metals Group. And this is all we've got for you on Politibrawl here today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you on the next one. And until then, y'all have a good one.